Reaper Ranch Press presents Anvil, V-Plague, Book 10 Written by Dirk Patton Narrated by Edison McDaniels Rachel stepped up next to me and grabbed my injured hand. She'd apparently found a medic kit, probably in one of the Hummers. While I studied the map, she splinted and taped my broken fingers. Going to be a bitch handling a rifle with that. I mumbled to her without taking my attention off the map. I'm sure you'll figure it out, she said, applying a final piece of tape and stepping away. Pull him back, Blanchard said to one of the captains, stabbing a point on the map where there was still a chance for the company in dire straits to escape before being completely surrounded and decimated. No comms, the man replied. We can't reach them. Send a runner, Blanchard shouted. We sent two. Neither made it. Third's on the way but we've lost contact with him. Everyone ducked as a pair of A-10s roared overhead, seemingly low enough to count the rivets in their skin. The sounds of rifle fire, light automatic weapons, and high explosives seemed to be coming closer. From farther away, there were several explosions as American and Russian jets joined in aerial combat. Two hundred yards to our front, a pair of Apaches were hovering only feet above the ground. They were screened from the battle by a low hill, using the sensor suite mounted above their rotors to see over the terrain and select their targets. As I watched, they popped up in unison. Clear of their cover, each fired two Hellfire missiles at targets I couldn't see. Before they could drop back into protection, one of them exploded as a Russian missile found it. The other jerked sideways, away from the blast, making it to safety. The shockwave ripped over us a second later, nearly knocking everyone to the ground. The smell of burning aviation fuel came with the wave of heat that arrived moments after. God damn it! Get a squad out of Charlie Company in there to pull these men out. What do we have available for air support? Blanchard shouted to be heard. All ground attack air assets are fully engaged with their armor, and we will lose the MEU if we retask. The captain I was standing behind answered. A-10s? The colonel turned to the other captain, who I realized was wearing an Air Force uniform. Working on it, sir. The enemy has multiple rotor wing assets and anti-air that are keeping them back. We've lost four birds already and are trying to get fighter support to clear path. I'd seen enough. Turning, I reminded Rachel and Arena to stay close to Blanchard before running to where ten rangers had set up a security line between the front and the command post. I ignored the cries from both Rachel and Blanchard. You five with me, I shouted, pointing at them as I ran past. None of them hesitated to leap to their feet and follow. It didn't really surprise me. Rangers prefer being on the offensive to the defensive. We ran a wide circle to avoid the heat from the burning Apache. As soon as we were far enough past to turn west towards the front without roasting ourselves, we headed for the base of the low line of hills the helicopters had been hiding behind. To my left was a cut in the terrain and I angled towards it, the five Rangers on my heels. Slowing as I entered the break, I cautiously approached the high spot. Motioning them down, I dropped my stomach to crawl the final few yards. There was a battle raging on the other side of the crest, and it's generally not a good idea to silhouette yourself against the sky when entering a fight. If the enemy doesn't see you and blow your ass off, there's a good chance of friendly fire taking you out. Suddenly popping up isn't a good way to stay healthy. Taking advantage of the cover afforded by a small rock resting on the lip, I peered around and grimaced. There weren't just a lot of Russians, there were a lot of Russians. And the battlefield was massive, spread across the horizon as far as I could see in either direction. Dozens of light and heavy armor vehicles belonging to both sides sat burning, black smoke billowing into the sky and creating a hellish pall. Farther out were multiple locations where aircraft had been shot down and crashed to the ground, adding to the haze. The sound of small arms fire was constant, and larger vehicle-mounted guns were firing, adding to the din. Helicopters buzzed over the fight, engaging each other as well as ground targets, while higher up I could see the trails of missiles as the fighter jocks tangled. Mortars were firing, both sides using them to keep troops from advancing. The only thing missing was heavy artillery, which I didn't understand, as I'd seen a fire battery notated on the map. The screams of men fighting and dying, the smell of munitions and spilled blood, the choking smoke from burning machines and expended ordnance. This was truly hell on earth, and with a wave to the rangers behind me, I stood and ran directly into it. Available at audible.com
My name is Edison McDaniels. Thanks for listening.